strap yourselves in because this one is about to get weird. On February 28th, 1989, an elementary school teacher from Mijakoji in Fukushima returned home from school. She walked into the toilet, looked down, and saw what looked like a shoe sitting at the bottom. This was an old-fashioned Japanese-style squat toilet, where the pipe, a U-shape with one end leading to the toilet and the other leading to outside, had to be regularly cleaned out. Confused, the teacher went outside to check the pipe from the other side, and was met with a grisly, horrifying discovery. A human body was inside. What was going on? The body in the toilet pipe, or as the case is more commonly known, the mysterious toilet death, is an incident that has fascinated the Japanese public for decades. Technically, and officially, the crime has been solved, but there are few who agree with the ruling, and even less that actually believe it. How did a body end up in a teacher's toilet pipe? It's one of those cases where the more details were uncovered, the stranger it got. Who was the body in the pipe? And what were they doing there? The teacher, referred to only as A in the media, rushed over to a nearby police officer's home to inform him of her grisly and shocking discovery. The officer called the fire department and other law enforcement officers, and they returned to the scene to retrieve the body. Only, there was one problem. They couldn't. The body was jammed in so tightly that in the end, the fire department had to dig the pipe out of the ground and then cut through the sides to remove the body. It was revealed to be of local man S, his name never fully revealed. S was a 26-year-old from the same village who lived with his parents. He was squished inside the pipe in the fetal position, half naked and clutching his jacket against his chest. He had been dead for two days, the cause of death being lack of circulation in the chest area, in addition to the freezing cold. His shoe was on his head, which was what the teacher saw from inside, and his other shoe was eventually found on a bank nearby. But what everyone wanted to know was how he got in there, and why. S was well known around town. He worked as senior operations staff of maintenance at the nearby nuclear power plant, and was also a senior manager of the local youth recreation club. He was also a prominent campaigner for the upcoming local election, taking part in speeches all around town. So, how did he end up dead in a toilet pipe? Perhaps surprisingly, the police quickly closed the case. In their opinion, S had gotten himself stuck inside the pipe while trying to peep on A in her house. Despite the numerous questions and riddles surrounding the case, they chalked it up to an unfortunate accident by a pervert. Of course, very few people have accepted this ruling, and for good reason. The first is that it would have been impossible for S to squeeze into the toilet pipe by himself. Even if we set aside the strangeness of this healthy young man deciding that squeezing into a toilet pipe to peep on a woman was his best option, which, remember, was an old-fashioned toilet that collected human waste at the bottom and needed to be cleaned frequently, the size and construction of the pipe made it impossible for him to get in there alone in the position they found him in. The pipe was a U-shape, not with soft, curving pipes, but hard, vertical connections. It measured 107 centimetres long vertically, and 125 centimetres long horizontally. So basically, a metre high, and just over a metre long. The section of pipe in the middle was only 50 centimetres high, 
and it was here that his body was found, his knees tucked up tied against his naked chest, where he held his jacket. He was found in February, in cold, cold Fukushima Prefecture, with no shirt and no shoes on. In fact, one shoe was on his head, meaning that it had to have been tossed in first, and then S went in after it. The entrance to the outside was only 36 centimetres wide, meaning his entire body had to be shoved into a space as wide as a basic ruler. On top of that, he was discovered face up in the pipe, meaning that he didn't go in face first, looking at the ground, but rather on his back, looking at the sky. If we believe the police's version of events that he got stuck in there himself, he basically slithered into a 30 centimeter gap backwards, squeezed through the tiny gap at the bottom to reach the horizontal section of pipe, and then somehow got stuck with his legs pressed against his chest. He was packed so tightly that the only way to free him was to cut the pipe in half. The only thing that made any sense in a case that made very little was that he didn't enter the pipe alone. Someone put him in there. S was murdered. It turned out that S and A actually knew each other. A was having problems with prank calls, and S was an acquaintance of her boyfriend. A's boyfriend and S were working together to track down the caller, and they even took recordings of the calls to the police, but they did nothing. S had reportedly discovered who the prank caller was shortly before his death. Did this person, realising that they were about to be uncovered, kill him and then hide his body in A's toilet pipe, perhaps in a fit of rage? Others suspected political rivals. S campaigned heavily for a local politician in the upcoming elections, but he suddenly and very abruptly left. Rumour had it that he was suspicious of the source of numerous campaign donations. When he confronted the people involved about it, he didn't like their answers, so he left. Was his death an act of political revenge? stuffed into a toilet pipe in the ultimate act of degradation. Even more outlandish rumours suggested that A herself was involved. They claimed A was a former delinquent and was still in contact with the younger gang members around town. S worked prominently with the local youths and, if rumours were to be believed, A still held a lot of power over the younger gang members around town. Was she somehow connected to the political campaign S abandoned because of shady donations? At the end of the day, these were all rumours, but persistent ones at that. After all, S had been dead in her toilet pipe for two days. Police found no wounds on his body, and he was alive when he went in. How had A been using her toilet for two days and not heard anything, nor see him? It was a little strange that she only noticed him several days later, when he was well and truly dead. Officially, S died because he crawled into a toilet pipe to peep on A. The evidence simply doesn't add up, and numerous officers involved in the case also transferred shortly after it was closed. A also reportedly quit her job and moved away not long after. We'll likely never know what really happened to this young man, but his incredibly strange and perplexing death, is still discussed to this day. What do you think happened to him? How did he get stuck in that toilet pipe? And more importantly, why? 
let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you again next time.